Welcome to Dead Man Talking. Before we start off tonight's show, I'd just like to say a huge shout to YB the King, a fantastic friend of mine, people. Uh, he's given me a lot of support. He's currently working on a, a brand new DMT logo, and uh, we're going to be working on some music together. Uh, can't wait to get fully involved in the next project. Big shout to you, buddy. Hope you're well. Tonight's story, guys, is part three of our series entitled UK Park Ranger Experiences. Without further ado, let's get straight into that. Okay, so my last post was a little different and I'm not sure I really like those memories and I certainly didn't get anything from bringing them back up. So, I'm toning it back down the more spooky encounters that I enjoy. This encounter occurred when I was one of a few rangers who took care of a designated campsite. This was also within my first year on the job, but I was still considered a rookie. It was a beautiful spot, however, it was neighbouring a farm that had a less than reasonable landover, landowner. In layman's terms, he was a real dick. His name was John and he would frequently come out with his loaded double barrel shotgun and threaten campers to get off his property. I can't count the number of times we've had to drive out to his farm and tell him that he has no rights in doing so and that it is categorically the National Park's land. Yeah, pretty bad, huh? It was late evening and the campsite was completely empty by one tent with a few teenagers occupying it. They were having a good time, making good use of the provided fire pits and, to my surprise, sticking to the strict rules in place to prevent fire spread. It was midsummer and the air was warm, so they were out of their tent and being relatively loud. I had only needed to come over to their camp twice to ask them to turn their music down, and that was good for a bunch of teens. I would often have to ask teenagers to leave, but this group was pretty well behaved. Eventually, they all quietened down and decided to hit the hay. It was about two o'clock in the morning when I get a call through to the emergency phone. Now, at this point, I should mention that campers are given a leaflet with information in regards to who to report emergencies or suspicious activity to. We always urge them to call us at the station first as we're only a short walk from the site and we would then call the police if needed. This was to ensure they get some form of help immediately. So, I answer the phone instantly. Hello, Park Ranger Station, I announced, ready for some bullshit excuse of an emergency such as someone's getting alcohol poisoning or something like that. But instead, I hear a young girl whispering down the phone. There's someone in the words near our tent. He's told us to get out of his forest or else he'll shoot us. And we're all really scared to get out. Please come and save us. Despite her whispering, I could hear the urgency and tremble in her voice. She was definitely scared, of course. I already knew who it was, and I was really frustrated that this stupid man hadn't got the message yet. I grabbed my jacket and began jogging over to the campsite. I was coming up over to their tent, and I could already see a man standing at the fire just staring at the tent. He did indeed have a shotgun, and my heart was pounding. I was sure it was the stupid old farmer, but he wasn't wearing his usual flat cap. And I'm sure this man was way too big built to be the same guy. But it was dark and he stood on my side of the fire so I couldn't really see his figure. I called out to him instantly. Hey John! John! Wait John! What have we told you about coming onto our land like this? Get out before I call the police. I was angry and you could hear it in my voice. I was ready for him to spin around and start rambling on about how this is rightfully his property, as he always did. But this man seemed to turn around suddenly 
as if he was startled. He stared at me for maybe one second before sprinting off into the woods. I reached for my flashlight and shone it in his direction. It couldn't have been John. He was too agile. John was a stubborn bastard and he was way too old to be sprinting about. I decided to back off as I was on my own and I didn't run past the camp but instead stopped and told the teens that they should pack up all their gear right now and head back to the ranger station. I explained how we would refund their money and drop them off at a safe location in a local town. My colleague, who just got back from his nightly run to the shops, agreed to take them into town while I checked the cameras. Now, the cameras at the campsite are pretty poor quality, as you would imagine. They were high quality once upon a time, but drunken campers kept throwing rocks at them, and three got stolen once. So, we now use cheap cameras that are far easier to hide in the trees. A camera was set up right next to camp, right at the edge of the campsite, which was next to a wall of trees that lead into deep forest. Their camp was barely in sight. Upon reviewing the footage, I was able to confirm that this strange man was definitely not our usual charmer. He was an entirely different person and he didn't take off in a direction that you'd take back to John's farm. He instead ran into the forest. I then proceeded to rewind back to where the teens are setting up camp and watch it through at an accelerated rate. But no less than 10 minutes into the teens setting up, I can see the vague silhouette of a man crouched in the brush. He was just staring at them. He would frequently pace around in a tree line, ducking in and out of the camera's field of view. I was very concerned and immediately I called the police. My colleague and I helped an armed response unit search for this creep. And it didn't take us long to find him as he wasn't exactly discreet. He had lit an, an illegal fire and was humming to himself and would occasionally stop to mumble non-sensual crap to himself. The armed police instructed us to stay where we were until given the all clear, so my colleague and I found a very nice place to stop and just watch. The man, now clearly visible from the light of his fire, looked to be in his forties. He wore a large trench coat and tracksuit bottoms with large, large boots. His black hair was long and wiry and his beard was more of a dark brown and very bushy and clearly overgrown. His face, well, it was absolutely dirty and disgusting. It was clear this guy hadn't washed in a very long time. The police formed something of a circle around him and suddenly rushed him from all angles. There were five of them all surrounding him now. The creep didn't even have a chance to reach for his gun before they were on top of him and got him a restraint. They found narcotics in his camp along with unregistered shotgun and several hunting knives. He was high as a kite and wouldn't stop crying and then screaming with anger and then crying again and then pleading and then he was finally carried away as he carried on like this all the way back to the ranger station where we placed him in our one holding cell. A prisoner transport van arrived about 15 minutes later and took him to be processed. He was charged with attempted armed robbery, possession of an illegal Class A drugs with suspected intent to sell, possession of an illegal firearm and a few others. My favourite charge, personally, was the lighting of an illegal fire in a controlled national park. This man was certainly very intimidating and I'm sure that just myself and my colleague wouldn't have been able to tackle him alone. I dread to imagine what would have happened if he hadn't decided to run when I shouted at him, and I hope I never have to meet him again. John the farmer seemed to stop soon after. However, after looking into it, I was able to confirm that it was him who caused this kind of trouble the majority of the time. However, there was no way to be able to confirm every single complaint. I often wonder how long this man was out there. I hope you enjoyed this encounter. I'm sorry it wasn't a typically, typically scary story, especially with the armed response unit involvement. But when you're on your own, 
and looking into a large male with a shotgun in a practically empty campsite at midnight, it's a pretty scary experience. Be safe out there, kids. Be safe. Wow, hope you guys enjoyed that uh, part three of our series entitled UK Park Ranger Experiences. I will let you guys know if there's another part update as soon as I can. Uh, as ever, folks, please do like, share. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe to stay up to date with all Dead Man Talking content. And as ever, folks, remember, be safe, not sorry.